Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Julie is back with us, and she is somebody that can help lots of people change their lives. And by doing that, I really mean changing where you live, what it looks like to you in terms of the uh, architecture of where you live. She's a designer. She handles the construction, the entire project, which makes her very different in terms of hiring a contractor than a designer. We're going to talk all about that today. She's live and direct from California. Julie Lawton is on the program. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? Well, uh, last couple of times we got together, you were on these multi-million dollar house projects. Uh, today, you're in between you. stuff. What are, you, what are you working on today? I love getting into the, the world of Julie. Well, we're wrapping up a project that I did in North Laguna, which is the 1928 vintage cottage where my client actually grew up. And so we're pouring, we poured the driveway last week and we're putting in the stepping stones and finishing the yard. And the house has been done for six months, but we had to finish the yard and we had rain. So we, were, we got delayed. So working on that. And then I'm uh, working on some paint for this $30 million estate on the ocean, which you saw the one where the beach goes both ways. Yep. Uh, Camel Point. And then we have a bunch of repairs going on inside and resealing. I should say cleaning and restain, re cleaning and all the stains out of all the stone and the marble and the tile and recalking all the joints and the lines. So it looks like the tile was just done fresh. So you know how behind the sink it gets all gross and then in the shower around the walls, it's all gross. We clean all that. So it looks like the house is brand new when we're done. So, and then clean all the stainless and all the fixtures and the faucets and all that good stuff. So, and then I'm doing another one at the high school, which is wrapping up with the wood floors went in last week and the, and the countertops, the marble countertops are going in this week. And, oh, it's just a lot going on. That grout thing that you mentioned drives me crazy. I've yeah. tried... Oh, try everything, everything. You never to, get it clean. You never get it clean. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think all bathrooms, it should just be black. Just kidding. <laughs> it's now, I wonder what that would look like. I guess if you had black tile uh, and you had black grout. A lot of people have us do the subway tile with gray grout or almost black grout. So it's a vintage look. And then it looks kind of fun. I just had a client. He was actually... Um, Freddie Krueger, the actor, and he wanted his grout black because he actually cooks in his kitchen and he knows it's greasy. So we did white subway tile with gray, dark gray grout. It was go wow. gorgeous and gray <laughs> countertops. Now, and now, who is this that you just mentioned? Freddy Krueger, you know, Freddie Krueger, the the actor, Freddy Krueger, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. His name is Robert England, but his character is Freddy Krueger. I was trying to pull the name out and you just nailed it. Okay. Wow. Uh, I'm very smart because it's no matter what you do, it's a matter of time when yeah. your lighter colored grout, whether it's on the floor, backsplash, wherever, it's going to look nasty. It just is. Yeah. Even if you scrub it, you can't get it out. But they do make the, the grout that says it's stain resistant and waterproof. So they do say it's now stain resistant. They actually recently made this. So you're supposed to be able to clean it, but I just hate getting there in there with the bleach and the soft scrub because then that gets on the other stuff you're not supposed to uh, touch with bleach. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a very delicate balance and uh, hours of especially in a bathroom. And yeah, and there are some areas that are darker. You know the the area that's most traveled on in terms darker in terms of the uh, nasty look, and then you have lighter oh, yeah. areas, and then uh, it just. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, you know, your feet, your body has oil. So whatever dirt you have on you every single day, if you will go barefoot, you grind it into the floors because every house has a light layer of dust in it from just traffic because you're not hermetically sealed. So that little dust barrier with the wrong footprints, just bare feet causes a nightmare. <laughs> For sure. Uh, all right. Off of that and on to something else. And this is kind of the, the backbone of your business. You're a one-stop shop. It's design, build, service. You do it all. You do it all. Yes. Designer, architect. A lot of people look at them in the same way. The difference between mm -hmm. the two and why you need both. Well, it's funny because if you have a really good architect that's more of a designer like Frank Lloyd Wright, he could design your furniture and everything in your house. But most architects are just the shell and here's the windows and doors. 
And then you get this big list. What's the doorknobs? The designer needs to pick it. What's the interior door style? What's the cabinet style? What's the countertop material? What's the flooring material? And then, of course, the drapers and the furniture is all the decorator or designer. So you have to have an architect to draw the plans. And they don't do the interior design, which is what's screwed and glued to the walls. And then you have the decorator, which is the lady that brings in the soft goods that are not attached physically to the home. So I like to separate interior designer from decorator so people get it that interior designers actually work right alongside the architect with the wood floor, the cabinets, the detail of the countertops, the detail of the tile and every piece of tile and the grout size and the, um, you know, every, every, the layout is all the designer. Unless your architect says he's going to do that, but traditionally he hands the, the homeowner a set of plans, permit ready, and none of that's there. Interesting, because I would put in the same category the designer, interior designer, and decorator. To me, yeah, you know, not not knowing. They are, I would they, think are, they, are, they are the same, but I don't do the decorating. I mean, I can, but I just don't do it because my my house my my clients like either have their furniture or they just go to restoration hardware. <laughs> Right. And it's all done. And I, and then I do the blinds and whatnot. But I don't get into the soft goods as much as I used to when I did model homes and then some full scale projects. So I always separate the interior design because we actually as interior designers like licenses, space planning, lighting design, professional lighting design, ergonomics. What are the mm. sizes and heights of how the human body functions in the space? That's real interior design. Decorating is sofas and pillows and rugs and drapery. And, you know, you should know what you're doing, but licensed interior designers really is space planning and ergonomics and lighting plans and, you know, valuing in the house the same as the architect does. So there's a whole thing about it. Well, even on the design side, you know, if you're working with somebody, you can give them suggestions. You know, you're not the decorator, but, you know, if somebody says, Julie, um, this looks all great, you know, where we put this here and put that there. I, I can't mm -hmm. decide what color to make the walls. Like, what do you think? You can give your opinion, you know, based on your experience. It's not like uh, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to clam up and say, no, I'm sorry, got to get somebody else. Nope. So what I do is I do all the paint colors, all the tile on the or wood floor and all the countertops and all the showers and all that stuff. I do everything scoot and glued to the walls so they can move their furniture in. And if they want to buy all new furniture, what I do is I can provide that service, but I usually just let them pick it because they have fun because everything you can order online now, right? It's all on. So it's so easy. So one client, I just went through the restoration hardware catalog and let her order it. And then the other ones, they just order from different places and I give them my opinion and then it's done. Mm -hmm. What when you talk about paint color, what is the most unusual in your memory request or treatment done in terms of color? Anything stand out in your mind? Well, most people want me to pick the color because they can't decide. And and then we go with neutrals and whatnot. But I guess the most unusual would be someone that wants a special color um you know like a really deep color that maybe reminds them of something or they're going for a theme so mm. you know i've done you know i i'm doing a like i don't know if you see the gray in here but i have like a dove gray i'm doing a spa right now the walls are almost black they're like a, a gray flannel like a men's suit gray flannel because it's for a guy so um uh, they're just really cool. And most people wouldn't pick that color, but I'm it's a sauna rooms and it's supposed to be tranquil with it with the um with it one of those um not a hot tub, but the soaking tub, you know, the plunge tub. We're gonna put the plunge tub in there. Okay. So it's all gray, gray limestone on the floor and um dark, 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 gray. So that's the most um daring because it's almost black in there. It's mm. like a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I would kind of was thinking that too. I, you know, could be some LED lighting going on. Um, you said the word theme. What about themes that more unusual things? I'm just kind of curious what, what some people have done. Well, um, you know, we have the, you know, the wine rooms and the Italy and the whole heavy duty country theme. So those are a no brainer. So what's the most unique theme I've ever done? Oh my God. Um, 
a lot of the themes are historical stuff like turn of the century and Like when I do the mosaic tiles and the gold gilded tiles, so that's more like Hearst Castle. So that's not so crazy, but when you do a gold gilded tiles, that's over the top. So I did a whole pool with gold gilded tiles around the border and then um, special blue tiles. So it kind of looked like Hearst Castle. But um, what's the craziest one? I'm trying to think if like a jungle day type thing. I'm thinking there was one in the past. What? Oh, I had one where I think we did. Um, like the LED stars, like the whole ceiling. It was a home theater. So we did the whole ceiling and the actual Nice. star pattern of the, um, when it's so like you were outdoors and with LED lights. So that was fun. I, I have So. the visual and I'm, I'm curious, was it modeled exactly after the constellations or just Yes. random stars? Was it No, really? it was modeled. It was modeled. There, there was the pattern to it. Mm Wow. hmm Yeah. And um, I noticed there was a new luxury car on Instagram that has that in the ceiling inside. I think it's a Bentley or I think it was a Bentley, but it, they have that in cars now. Cool. Yeah, Yeah. I can. So the whole roof inside is uh, lit up. But I don't think it's the actual constellation, but, you know, it's LED it looks like the sky. I I'm kind of a fan of that. My, you know, on a very lower scale in my daughter's room, she has a thing that projects up um, and it's it's more you know better quality in terms of the intensity of the uh, what it projects. But it's nice looking up there and seeing that uh, these are blue lights. You can change like I the color. have that. I, I had that when I had my apartment at the beach. I thought it was fun to have that in the bedroom because the bedroom was so small. And I did that to help me sleep. It's it's a wild effect, and she has a ceiling fan in there. So when the fan's going around, then it's it's just a different effect to it. But yeah, there's Yeah, <laughs> oh. no, I love that. yeah, there's a That's little fun. little things, little changes that people make. Um, when it comes to the design, an interior designer, that's something that you do. Yes, I do all the interior design and I will do people's furniture and custom furniture, but I just don't like all of that shopping because it's endless, but I do do it and I do it well. And, um, but again, a lot of people default to restoration hardware. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it's quality. You can you can trust what you're getting uh, and, and variety, too. How about features? I want to talk about features in different rooms. You know, now that we're going a little bit deeper here in terms of themes and interior. Interesting features that uh, you've included in a kitchen, even anything that uh, comes to memory. Okay, so my favorite kitchen was right here across the street from where I'm sitting, funny enough, on a place in Corona del Mar, and they had a walnut-clad pantry with every shelf and every every height customized to fit every single jar and container the woman had because she had special jars and containers for everything she stored. And then the, then the, the other end of the kitchen was the wine room, the wine counter with the little... little drawers above for the little different coffees and teas and then a special storage for some very expensive booze but the little drawers so that was cool but the funnest part was that she had the big island with her sink on it and the and the um thirty thousand dollar italian range behind it which she named um i forgot um uh, martha or something i can't remember but it was funny <laughs> And but the little island had sparkling water. And I thought it was so cool that we put in a machine to make your carbonated Pellegrino come out of the faucet. So that was the most fun. I didn't know they made it carbonated to because you can get the carbonated bottle you buy, but I didn't know they made the faucet with a thing underneath the sink. Wow. Uh, Yes, super cool. don't make a cocktail or have carbonated, you know, drinkable water. Very fancy, I thought, you Well, know. you know, I, I, it almost reminds me of a beer tap. So what Yeah. that's, you know, that's infusing some CO2. So That's that, all you it know, was. it's all With probably. the with the with the good water, you know, it's not just tap water. Mm Right. hmm Wow. That's I want that. I know it's fun to just <laughs> go get your sparkling water. And then right. they had the hot and cold and the insta hot and the cold was there. So it was like so full service sink. Mm hmm How unique. Uh, you know, our, uh, this is just a random question, but garbage disposals, are they still installed now? The garbage disposal in the sink is good. We never do the trash compactors anymore. Okay. Those things that, that squeeze the trash. I only had one lady, she was about my age, so she's older, that still liked that because it compacted her trash for the um 
you know, the, I guess they're trash cans. It made less trash than the trash can. It makes sense, right? But I don't install them because I think they they stink. <laughs> mm, you know, you point. can't get around it. I haven't installed one for 30 years. How's that? Not a new wow. one. I, wow. I had a client that had one and wanted one, but no new ones. Mm -mm. Interesting. Everybody wants to recycle. They all want to recycle. Well, that's good. I mean, at least they're, they're being mindful of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, it's really good. Yeah. All separated. I have, a, I have a trash compactor and it's called a bottle. I just take it and I push everything down with the bottle. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. I easy. just step on. Yeah, I just step on mine. <laughs> and, and then there's that. Yeah. The only thing is I have to replace the bag very quick because if I leave the room to bring the garbage outside, my cats just start looking around like, what do you got in there? Nothing for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have to yeah, get rid of it. Yeah. That's funny. So what, what projects you have coming up? Kind of curious. Okay. So I have a really fun project with a client who's her and her husband live in Milan, Italy, and they also have a summer home in France. So we're going to do the remodel of their Laguna Beach house in november because they spend the summer here august and september here because you know italy's dead or whatever i guess so they're going to go back and we're going to remodel the house they bought i think they bought the house 20 some years ago so it needs new windows new doors new kitchen and new bathroom so that's a full-scale typical remodel and then i got this other little one on temple hills which is they have this cute little mid-century house. It's one story with a little old garage on the first story. And then it's on the hill. So then the second story is one story of the house. And they're on a hill. So I'm going to take the garage that's sitting on the street level and add the second story so they can walk into the house from the second story. And then the second story will be an ADU. So they have multifunctional ADU office on top of the garage. They can walk across into the house and then they can connect the upstairs patios all the way across and make it fabulous. And it's ocean wow. view. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you That's know, you, you're great when you describe because I, I see the visual of it and what that's going to be fun? like adding that second story on top of there. Yeah. How, that, that's like, yeah. Boom. And it all becomes one big house. Boom. Mm -hmm. Wow. How about permits on something like that? Is that a little bit of oh, a challenge? It's a challenge because it's Laguna Beach. So number one, the caissons and the structure will take forever to get permitted. And number two, we're adding a second story in Laguna Beach, which technically blocks view. And Laguna has view preservance. So your neighbors can complain if you block their ocean view. It's the only city that has that. Newport doesn't have it. So you've got to go through the design review board hearing and make sure you're not blocking someone's precious view because everybody, everybody's view counts. So it's really tricky. So it's like a year, year and a half long process to get permitted. Wow. So, yeah. I, I would imagine and that they have yeah. to send out letters because I've, I've gotten letters before. Yes. Uh, even if somebody's going to move their shed, you know, so you, yeah. you get a, you oh, get a yeah. letter. Hmm. 300, 300 square foot radius. Wow. And then I have a, I have another one that's kind of in the village off of Bluebird Canyon, and they have a house with these really steep roofs. So they don't they only have a one story ranch with a really steep, steep roof. So they have some stuff up there, which is not permitted, like a little apartment and a little walkway. So I'm going to turn that into an ADU and an office. And then they have their neighbor on the ocean side about to block their view with a two new two, two story home so they're going to add a second story so they can see over that house cuz it's a little lower on the hill <laughs> that's great actually yeah, oh yeah I, yeah cuz called me just to do like a kitchen remodel and maybe fix up the ADU and, and when they saw the neighbor's stakes go up like it turned into second story addition for real so, uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going three stories. You <laughs> yeah, think you're exactly. Just... <laughs> no, they just, they just emailed me. I got another idea for our ocean view. I said, I'm on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you think so? I'm calling Julie. You're done. <laughs> it's, end it's endless what we can do. There's nothing we can't do. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I just love the different projects that, because, you know, you, you do the basic stuff. Dare I say the word basic, but you also do interesting things but when we talk about those other projects that are you know a little you know not so common it gives you ideas it gives mm -hmm. you idea, and you can you can turn that into something even even you know if you're on a budget you could take something that somebody did and then scale it back yes i had a client that they they i don't know how they did this but they hired this other architect and then they fired him and hired me to finish but 
they had a plan for 1.2 million with a hillside again with an ADU, a lower addition to the house. And then you walk down some steps to an ADU office. And then you walk down a few more steps to a pool. I'm like, seriously, I thought you were on a budget. So we took their $1.2 million budget, which they couldn't afford, and reversed it back up to, hey, you need to repair your house, fix the roof. And because some of the house is actually falling off, it's a very unique architecture. So mm -hmm. now we're going to do a $400,000 budget and get them done so they can actually live in their house safely and not have any more leaks. And then maybe phase two, they can do the ADU, but they'll never do the pool. But they, you know, the architect took them to a level they couldn't even dream of affording, you know, when they, they had a very, a very different budget, but he went ahead and drew the plans. Wow. So it made uh, no sense to me how they got that far. <laughs> especially when their house is falling apart. Hello. It was falling apart. This house is like a soccer ball with wood sticks holding it together. It's that kind of shape. And there's the rotted beams because it was built in 73 and never touched since then. Eesh. And it's just solid wood with no metal and or protecting it. So, yeah, we're going to replace a bunch of beams and uh, get them straightened out and it'll be fun. So when it comes down to the the architecture, the design there, you take care of that in-house. And does it cost more if you go to a one-stop shop as opposed to hiring a separate architect? Now that's the key. It costs less because we charge less and it goes faster. I don't have to talk to uh, bug the architect for the plans or bug the designer for the materials. I do it all. And then I have my engineers on my team. I pay them and I manage them. So I don't have to wait for some guy that doesn't care who I am because he's got 20 other projects. My engineers count on my business for the next for the last 30 years and the next 20 years. They count on it. So they treat me right and put me ahead of the line. So I don't have to wait for anybody. Now, if you don't hire me and there's no other companies like me, well, okay, there's other one-stop companies, but you deal with five people. But if you don't hire me, you deal with 10 people. You have to hire an architect, an interior designer, decorator, a structural engineer, a civil engineer, a soils engineer, a Title 24, a, uh, a survey guy, and then you have to hire the contractor and then you might need let's say um a pool guy or you know if you have a, a landscape guy a landscape architect so there's 10 people to get a project done if you don't hire a one-stop shop it's insane oh and you know nowadays it's so impersonal just about everything we deal with is impersonal online customer yeah. service it's automated you know ai uh that's why i would gravitate to hiring you because you care you care about the I project. Actually care. I, I care too much. And I was telling my staff, I'm too nice. I mean, my God, I've been giving discounts this year and it's killing me. Um, You know, I give people a break because, you know, it's overwhelming and I can do things quicker, faster and more efficient. And if I'm actually physically me running the job, I just need my staff to be paid. I don't need to make a fortune. I just need to keep my company afloat. I'm not in it for the money or, you know, I'm in it to make it work. You know, because we have to be competitive, too. But I want it to be a pleasure, pleasurable experience and have fun and not be all stressed out because they don't know how it all works. And there's a thousand components to a remodel and they're never going to understand it all. We just need to make them happy and make get it done on budget and on time. And stress does not bother me. I'm like a... <laughs> I'm like a freaking now. Uh, Tasmanian. Uh, my sister calls me a Tasmanian devil, but like, she also calls me a steamroller. <laughs> yeah, or a steamroller because I just keep moving. So if you're not on the bullet train, you know you missed it. <laughs> well, you know so, what? It's it. You know what, Julie? I think you thrive on that. You thrive on it. You know, and and we all need a little bit of stress in our life. Otherwise, it would be a flat line. Nothing. You know. You know I think that the fear, the fear that people have, it, you can become fuel, but stress of wanting to, you know, keep that steamroller going, that stress of that competitiveness is what keeps me going all day. Yeah. And listen to a little, listen to a little Metallica and Pantera on the way <laughs> to work and I'm ready. <laughs> That's awesome. So last question, when, when are we getting the HGTV show? When, when, you know, you, you need one, you, you deserve know. one how many people have asked me to do a tv show but i do have a producer a friend of mine ron and he lives out by you in pennsylvania and he's doing the show um what's her name hillary that that realtor with the english accent she's on i got she just had a new season. she used to be on uh don't tell me love it or list it yeah yeah uh, yeah with the guy he's working, I, he's, he's working on that show and he says he has a pitch for me and we're always because i did four hgtv shows with marine mccormick 
and the, the Brady Bunch gal, you know, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And, um, you know, I'm ready if someone wants to do it, but I, um, I am doing, you know, a bunch of YouTube videos and I'm getting out there. So we'll see, but you know, it's, um, it would be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. You and you are unique and have such a fresh approach to everything. Um, and you don't see that. And I watch a lot of HGTV. Thank really you. Do. You don't see it. I'm telling you, none of the other ladies get out there and actually get in the dirt and do it and actually run the job. They got other guys doing it. <laughs> and oh. and the and the very few that do, you know, strap on a tool belt, put on a hat, and you know, I I think they're playing to the camera. You're doing they're playing everything. to the camera. They're playing to the camera and um, you know. It it's standing in the dirt and actually running the job and doing it is different than uh, faking it and um, saying you did it and a bunch of guys are doing it for you because when you actually run it and make the decisions it's kind of fun it's thrilling and every day it's um you know every we make decisions like this every every day every half hour sometimes and it affects the whole job I mean you got to make decisions standing on your feet whether you like it or not it's like tons of pressure and but I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's like sailing a ship and well, wait a minute, we get some weather over here. We're going to go this way. Yeah, you don't exactly. you don't know what's going to happen, you know, when you pivot that way. Uh, you can take a calculated risk, you know, because you've been doing it for so long. Well, uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'm 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 your champion. HETV. We're working on it. We're going to come up with Let's a cool name. And, yeah. Julie, Let's always great having you on. And uh, again, I love your your fresh approach. Um, I look forward to talking to you. I really do. Thank you, Stephen. We'll see you next week and have a wonderful weekend coming up and uh, can't wait to do it again. You too. Let's go crank some Metallica. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.